What's up everybody? So we're gonna do a different kind of beer today, but uh, figured why not just try it straight out of the box here. Who that said you can't have breakfast? Beer for breakfast. Oh, this doesn't work too good. I need something. I got an idea. Cheers, let's try it now. No, no. I think we need to like put the cereal in the mash instead. That's not very good. Anyways, we tried, right? Let's, let's uh, talk about this beer for a minute. So I've seen this craze going on on the brewing communities about adding cereals to your beers and making these cereal beers. So it's fall, Halloween's around the corner. We're doing blueberry beer. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I don't know if we'll taste this as all in this beer or not. We're gonna put it in the mash and uh, see how it goes. Uh, we're gonna try this out, see how this turns out, man. Uh, it is the time for spooky beers. And uh, we're gonna use a new hop I've never even used before. And uh, we're gonna use some hops called Belma hops. They're supposed to add kind of like a fruity-esque tropical flavor to the beer. We'll see how it turns out. I don't know how much these hops are going to affect it or may or change the flavor quite a bit, but I'm trying to embrace the berry flavor there. And also we're using 10 pounds of two row malt for this and a pound of white wheat. So this is gonna be kind of like a Weiss beer, really. Uh, so. Nottingham yeast for the yeast so that we don't impart any other flavors other than what is in the grain and the hops. So we'll see how this goes. So I'll get back to you here in a second when we mash in. All right, let's do the two row in white wheat first. Monster mash. Seems appropriate for this beer style. Although I'm pretty sure if I play the Monster Mash music, I will get a copyright strike, so I'm not gonna do that. Just gonna vigorously stir this mash, get all the clumps out. We're mashing at uh, 150 today. That'll be a lighter body beer. And uh, we did a strike of 154. Oh, see some clumps right there. Especially at the bottom. Time to mash in some cereal here. Marshmallows and all. This is gonna have a very interesting effect on the color of the beer because the cereal is purple. <laughs> and the dyes in the marshmallows too. That's one one pound bag. Let's do the second, second one here. Make sure, get this stuff submersed. 
That's why the grain absorption on the uh, cereal might be sh much greater than I anticipated. So we'll see <laughs> how this turns out. That is going to be an interesting looking beer. And we are recirking right now. All right, we're mashing for 90 minutes. We'll see how this shakes out. I'm expecting to see a gray purple beer. <laughs> so, see you in 90 minutes. All right, mash is done. I'm doing a 10 minute mash out at 168, but uh, <laughs> the beer in the lines is, it's purple. <laughs> Purple-esque, so. It'll be really interesting to see what this beer looks like in the end. I did take some gravity measurements along the way and I was reading like 1050, 1051 already pre-boil. So I knew this beer was gonna be like kind of high in the gravity spectrum. So get back to you here a second. We'll get this hoisted out and uh, we'll take a look at that uh, spent grain bill. Look at that color. Is that the weirdest looking color yet? <laughs> a gray beer? Like a purple gray beer? Uh, we'll see how this thing shakes out at the end, but uh, you could definitely smell the cereal in this beer when I, it was mashing. And then you started to smell the uh, grains as well going on, the other grains. There's an interesting smell in here, but uh, yeah. We'll see how this turns out. Ramping it up to boiling right now. So we'll be back in a bit when we add our hops. All right, we're out of boil, so I'm gonna add 0.2 ounces of Belma, the hop spider. And we are rocking and rolling. See you in 50 minutes. All right, so we had a 10.49 on the pre-boil, which tells me this beer is probably going to come out about 10.52, which is what Beersmith's telling me it should come out to. 10.52, 10.51. Um, the cal the, what it's going to come out to, but for the beer style that I chose in Beersmith, which is like the German um, wheat beer, basically, um, it's uh, going to come out, it should have came out to like 10.48 or something, so it's, it's high in the gravity, but it's a weird experimental beer anyways. I'll show you how the grain right quick. There's the spent grain. <laughs> the flies are already interested in it, so I'm gonna take it and dump it. But uh, yeah, it's a gray grain build, it's weird. And the boil is a weird gray color also. So this beer should be interesting looking when it's done. It might clear up some and turn into a normal beer color. But we shall see. So I'll see you here when we add our next hop edition. Oh, these actually smell really good, man. smell o vision get it, get some. Get some of it. <laughs> man, these are going in for the last 10 minutes of the boil. 0.39 ounces, roughly. Do we ever measure that exact? I don't know. 10 minutes? I better set my timer right quick while I'm talking about it. But check out this beer, man. It's uh, it's ghoulish. <laughs> it's like, uh, gr it's gray. It's purple gray. There's so much dye in that cereal. <laughs> We're gonna drink it anyways when it's ready. I mean, we don't put all this effort in the brewing beer to not drink it, right? 
Some of them do have ended up down the drain though. I won't lie. I've had two beers I couldn't stomach. Uh, and they've been down the drain. We will get back to you when I'm putting this in the fermenter. Hey guys. Check, check it out. <laughs> Let me turn the pump speed up a little bit. Here's our beer color. <laughs> I'm, cool. I'm chilling it down right now. I'm about to put it in the fermenter, but I wanted to show you all that. That is insane looking. So, in the fermenter she goes. Right there. Just got to pour it into the fermenter. So, we'll get back to you here soon when I actually taste this beer. So, stay tuned for the rest of this video. Cheers. It's time to talk about this beer and see how it turned out. There she is. You can see the gray, bluish gray color totally went away and now we're left with just a uh, beer here. But yeah, she came out to a nice uh, golden color there, mostly from that base malt. Um, but yeah, the, the gray color, blue color did kind of fizzle out and leave us with a very beautiful, fairly clear beer here. So we're going to give this a smell, a taste, and see if this even came out like anything like I was expecting. So I'll tell you the truth. I did try this very, very early on, and I'll tell you about that here in a moment. It smells like beer, straight up, like almost lager-ish, like a, like a crisp corn lager smell, which can definitely be attributed to like that whole base cereal piece of the the beer that smell a little bit of like some sweetness and uh, I can definitely smell the uh, boo berryness in there and it might be the Belma hops too just kind of messing with my nose but the notes are here are the notes on this beer it's like sweet boozy berry -y with like that that corn like a very corn lagery smell like if you ever smell like a like a miller light or something like that it has kind of that corn smell to it i'm picking that up along with that sweet berry kind of smell to it so let's give this a swig and see how she is Very boozy, very upfront corn flavor in there. Um, I'm letting things kind of clear up here. I taste the Belma hops fruit-esque profile on the back end of this beer. Uh, there was no help from the yeast whatsoever as far as flavor profile goes. The yeast I chose to use is a, a very neutral yeast. Um, I believe it was Nottingham I used in this, I'm trying to recall, Nottingham yeast is what I use in here. Uh, so it's a very aggressive fermenting yeast and it fermented this beer down to like, a, I think a 10.09. .9, so it fermented every bit of sugar it could out of this beer. So it doesn't surprise me that the blueberry uh, piece was almost lost in this. Um, man, but it smells good. It, it's a very refreshing beer, but it's a dangerous beer. What I mean by dangerous is 7.4 ABV. There was a lot of sugar in this beer uh, pre-fermentation and uh, all the sugars from the cereal, all the sugars from the base grains and the, uh, yeah, it just, <laughs> it just, uh, yeah. And, and I can taste a little bit of that wheat profile in it too, because we did use a little bit of wheat and I am tasting a little bit of that wheat profile, kind of that fruit-esque, uh, you can see by the head even, 
like just how heady it is. I'll uh, just, it's very heady as far as like lacing goes and everything. So it's, <laughs> there's a lot of that wheat profile is contributing to that. But uh, yeah, I could taste a faint sense of that blueberry on the back end. What I would probably do different with this beer is uh, I'd probably put it on some blueberries just to add some more blueberry into there. Um, or I'd use like uh, some blueberry extract or something and just and just put some blueberry extract uh, flavoring in this beer uh, when it hits the keg. And that would uh, give me some more of that blueberry flavor I'm looking for. But overall, it's it, it fermented so clean. It's a very clean beer, but it's it's also boozy, and uh, you and I, it's dangerous because you could throw back quite a few of these without realizing how heavy the ABV is on it. But bam, not bad for a throw together recipe. Most of the time, when people make this blueberry beer, from what I can tell, they they use like a they do a sour with it so they put some as, uh, lactic uh, acid in there and uh kind of turn it into a sour and do like a sour a kettle sour with it or something to kind of get a little bit of that sour fruitiness kind of going on in the beer <clears throat> and they tend to use like a they'll try to throw like a belgian yeast or something in there uh to try to give it some more fruitness in the beer so you're kind of cheating i think uh would i do this again probably so but what i would do is like i said i would add some more blueberry into the beer to give it more berry because you do capture you do kind of capture that cereal profile in in the beer for sure so it definitely wasn't like a complete loss but it's a lesson learned and i think i would uh, add uh, uh more blueberry in there so let's talk about when it first hit the keg when it first hit the keg <laughs> and I tapped the keg, it, was, it wasn't it was very appealing at all. It was very hot. Like the only thing I tasted in this beer was alcohol. It was just so alcohol forward that it wasn't pleasant to drink. Um, I let it sit in the keg for about a month and a half. I brewed, I fir I, I brewed this beer back in like uh, late, uh, late August, I believe. And, uh, or no, it was, no, I brewed it in mid-September, early to mid-September. So uh, yeah, it had time to kind of condition through a good bit of October here. Uh, but when I first tried it, it was just not a pleasant beer at all. And I felt like it was gonna be a, a dumper. Like I was just gonna pour this thing down the sink or something, but it's not a dumper. Um, it's not quite what I was expecting, but at the end of the day, it is a pretty beer, look at that. It's a, it's a very nice looking beer. Good lacing. Yeah, it's, man, it's got that, you can, you can totally smell that blueberry on the nose. And the Belma hops playing in there as well, but. It's a very drinkable beer, man. You could throw a lot of these back, and, and man, I probably shouldn't, but I might, you know, on a weekend. I have a lot of beer at my disposal right now, so. Good times are ahead. <laughs> so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this double hit Halloween that I did this year. Uh, one was the uh, pumpkin ale. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you haven't, go check out the pumpkin ale video. I have fun with these uh, holiday beers a lot. I like to kind of add some of that aura into these videos. Uh, try to make them interesting. And uh, this one uh, just happened to be a bonus this year. And of course, I'm using my cryptic glass. Uh, for this as well. Cheers, happy Halloween again, and uh, you guys stay safe out there, and uh, we'll see you here real soon.